Acts chapter 17. We'll begin reading verse number 1. It says, Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thess Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and preached that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of a baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom G Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for your goodness. We're thankful, Lord, for a hope in heaven. And Lord, that was secured because of what you did on Calvary. Lord, we're glad you were the Christ and are the Christ. You are the Savior of the world. We're glad you died to become the propitiation for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. And even tonight, we can once again reason through the Scriptures and know that you are God. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you're not only uh, uh, God, you're the one and only God. There is none beside thee. God, we're thankful that you're our God tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to learn to depend on you more and wait on you more and discern you more. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd help us in these days that we live in to shine as lights in this dark world, that we might point folks to you and see some come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless tonight. I know your people have labored hard in this world uh, working their jobs and living life and God the weather change a lot of things impact the way we feel and our senses and all those things and God uh, I'm thankful they've made their way to the house of God thank you for some that were traveling back with us thank you Miss Janet's here and Lord thank you for touching her and Lord I pray that Lord you'd bless these dear folks for being in the house of God tonight sit down amongst us help us from the scriptures uh, God, help us to leave different than we came. Thank you, Lord, for still saving sinners. Lord, I'm glad Brother Adrian got saved 41 years ago. God, I'm glad if there's somebody here tonight lost without Christ, they can be saved tonight. What a Savior you are. God, we just bless you and praise you for all that you've done. Now, bless you, this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice several things in this text. I want you to notice, first of all, if you will, the conferring. Look again at verse number 2. The Bible says, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, uh, is Christ. Uh, notice Paul is... Uh, conferring with these uh, folks. He's taken the scriptures uh, and for three Sabbath days uh, he opens the Bible and shows them through the Bible that Jesus was the Christ. Uh, notice that it starts out verse number two that that's what uh, his manner was. Uh, uh, it was known to Paul uh, anywhere he went uh, he was going to find a synagogue uh, or he's going to find an assembly of people uh, and he was going to take the scriptures uh, and he's going to let them know that Jesus saves, uh, Jesus was the Christ, uh, Jesus changed his life uh, and he could change their life. I wonder what is our manner? 
What are we known for? Say, so, well, I'm, I'm known for being a pretty good person. I'm known for being a member of Manuel Baptist Church. Listen, I'm glad you're a good person, and I'm glad you're a member of Manuel Baptist Church, but if that's all you're known for, you've got some catching up to do. We ought to be known for our manner of serving Christ and letting folks know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. We see his conferring. Notice, notice the converts. Look at verse number 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, uh, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Say, how many got saved? I don't know, but there was, there was more than a handful. Uh, but I tell you this, nobody got saved if Paul wouldn't have told them the truth. Because he told them the truth, uh, they had ears that uh, were eager to hear, uh, and when they heard the truth, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. Uh, we see the conferring, we see the converts. Notice the, the counteracting. Can I say, any time God does the work, the devil don't like it. Amen. Mm. As a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's a, probably a good litmus test that uh, if the devil's fighting, you're probably doing something right. But notice, if you will, the counteracting of verse number 5. But the Jews, which believe not, moved with envy. Can I say that any time that the devil's crowd starts losing gain to God's crowd, they get the big green-eyed monster. They get jealous. They get envious. Hmm? Uh, you ought to note somebody that is always upset when they're not getting any attention. Now, see, I can understand that out of these babies. That's all babies know. Babies learn real early on if they scream, somebody's going to attend to them. But if somebody's full grown and they've still got a pacifier and they're wearing diapers and, and they're crying and screaming to get attention, they got a problem. Hmm? Uh, well, we see this crowd is envious. Notice what it says. But the Jews, which believe not moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. Now, if you study that out, lewd fellows of the baser sort were street people who did not work they just kind of hung around the marketplace all the time looking for trouble. Hmm? See, you thought that that's only a problem nowadays. That's always been a problem. There's always been a crowd that hangs out on the corners looking to get into no good. That was this crowd. And notice the Jews, uh, they didn't go to them Greeks that believed, and they didn't go to those uh, choice women that were not a few. They didn't go to that crowd. They didn't go... Uh, 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 the folks that live right, did right, uh, folks that uh, actually had uh, a, a little sense about them. No, they went to a crowd that they knew could stir things up, kind of like our politicians today. I, I know how to get these crowds to protest and make these signs and do all this stuff, uh, uh, storm the Capitol buildings and storm the uh, uh, courthouses and storm the governor's mansions. Uh, hey, where does that crowd come from? That's the Beezer sort. They're all always out there, huh? They stirred up that crowd to cause an insurrection. Notice what it said. Lewd fellows of a baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. See, Paul and, and that crowd was staying at this fellow's house. And so they went and attacked that house. Kind of like, uh, remember a couple years ago when they was burning down Seattle and they was burning down uh, 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 Portland, Oregon and there was uh, upheaval in Milwaukee and there was upheaval in Chicago and all that. Who was that? That's the Baser sort uh, 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 standing against a uh, uh, police. By the way, it's not big headlines, but they proved that that police officer did not kill George Floyd. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. That sucker was so high, he died of dope. Not that police officer. They've come out and they've proven it, but they haven't made a public apology to that police officer who probably lost his job, had to move to another city. You know something kind of funny? I'm, I might as well just say this is kind of funny. My children, when they went to Boone County High School, the assistant principal, his name was George Floyd. Mr. Floyd lived three doors down from me. Mr. Floyd, where you at, Thaddeus? 
Both his boys played football at Louisville. Mr. Floyd is the only, I think, All-American to ever go to Eastern Kentucky University. That Back then, they was small. He was an All-American, was drafted, and played for the Jets. Mr. Floyd is a fundamental Christian. He's a Bible believer. I mean, he cracked a whip around Boone County High School. You didn't mess around anything when Mr. Floyd was around. I mean, he was tough as nails. Uh, and here's the funny thing about it all. When they had that big funeral, remember COVID? If you had a loved one passed away, you was only allowed to have 10 people there. They had that big funeral. I had it packed out. I mean, it was a big display of everything. When they were showing the pictures of that George Floyd, they showed Mr. Floyd's picture. Huh? They did. Everybody said, Mr. Floyd, you ought to sue him for slander. But that's not his character. But anyway, that didn't cost you nothing. There's just a little bit of history you found out. Come to church, huh? But could I say, they stirred up a mob, and they got the whole city in an uproar, and they marched down to this fellow's house and drug him out of his house, huh? Mm, can I say that's what happens when you preach the truth. Wicked people don't like it. And if they have any influence, they'll go stir up a mob just to prove a point. Hmm? Huh? Now listen, Paul's preaching the truth. A multitude trusts Christ. Is there any insurrection out of that crowd? No. Where's the insurrection coming from? The unbelieving crowd. Just thought I'd throw that in. That didn't cost you nothing, huh? You know, by the way, the Bible does teach us not to be brawlers, not to be strikers. Huh? We're to live peaceably among all men. That's what the Bible teaches. Huh? Anyway, notice their claim in verse 6. I'm going somewhere. Just hang with me. I'm having a good time. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying that these have turned the world upside down to come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Huh? Sounds like some trumped-up charges. Hmm? No pun intended. Huh? They make a claim that this crowd is preaching there's another king other than Caesar. Well, there is, and Caesar's going to bow before him one of these days. Hmm? Then notice the chastening. Look at verse number 9. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. You know, if these guys were so wicked, why didn't they beat them and throw them in prison? Because they didn't have a leg to stand on. But notice what they did, what they always do. You grease my palms, I'll let you go. Just give me a little money and you can get out of this thing. Isn't that the way they always work? Huh? Hmm? Anyway, I'm interested in verse number 6. The Bible says this, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying that these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes tonight on turning the world upside down. Amen. You know, Jesus turned the world upside down with 11 men. Yeah. Amen. Can I say that the first century church turned the world upside down? Can I say that Throughout certain perils of parts of history, you can find out where just a few turned the world upside down, whether it be the Welsh Revival or other great revivals. Just a few caused the rest of the world to stop and take notice. Hmm? Isn't it about time somebody really turned this world upside down again? Sure. Hmm? I got to thinking about turning the world upside down. Can I say that they turned the world upside down, first of all, with a mission that was heaven sent. They had a mission that was heaven sent. 
The Bible says in Matthew 28, verse number 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things uh, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Uh, their mission was to preach the gospel. Their mission was to take the gospel everywhere. Uh, can I say uh, that mission has never been rescinded? Uh, we're still to preach the gospel. We're still to take the gospel uh, to every creature because, uh, neighbor, whether or not you realize it, uh, there are folks within a stone's throw of here that have never heard a clear cut presentation of the gospel. Amen. You start surveying people in this community, they believe all kinds of things sure. except the gospel. Hmm? They had a mission that was heaven sent. Acts 1 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. Can I say they turned the world upside down by taking the gospel to every creature? Hmm? Amen. Listen, I, I'm reading a book right now written by a friend of mine on the Great Commission. We all are responsible for the Great Commission. We all need to become part of the Great Commission. We'll never turn the world upside down if we can't turn Florence upside down. We can't turn Florence upside down if we don't take the gospel out. Hmm? And so my dear friends, they turned it upside down by having a mission that was heaven sent. We have been commissioned of the Lord to take the gospel. And in uh, uh, the weeks and months of coming, we're going to challenge uh, uh, everybody from the pulpit to the back pew to get more involved in the Great Commission. Hmm? Uh, my friend challenged his church. He challenged to get involved in the Great Commission. He said, let's, get, let's double our church size in a year. He said, they hadn't made it, but they have increased over 30% by more people just getting involved in the Great Commission. Hmm? He said, they're still shooting for it. Uh, I wonder what we could do. I wonder how many people we could reach if we just got more involved in the Great Commission. They turned the world upside down because they had a mission that was heaven sent. Can I say they had a message that had to be delivered? The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul said this, verse number 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh, that which I also received. Listen, if you've not been saved, you have no message to tell. But if you've been saved, you've got a message to tell. You don't need to know the whole Bible. All you need to know is how you got saved uh, and tell others how Jesus found you uh, and changed your life. Uh, he went on to say how that Christ died for our sins according to Scriptures, uh, that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, But if our gospel be hid, uh, it is hid to them that are lost. Uh, can I say... Uh, the devil wants to intimidate all of us not to tell our testimonies. Amen. Because people need to hear it. Hmm? Our families need to hear it. Amen. Our neighbors need to hear it. Uh, our co-workers need to hear it. The person that you get your coffee from or your, your Big Mac from in the drive-thru, they need to hear it. Uh -uh. Listen, there's a message that has to be delivered. The pastor's not the only one's called to deliver a message. Everybody's been saved, has been called of the Lord to deliver a message. God help us. They turned the world upside down because of the mission that was heaven sent, because of a message that had to be delivered. But also they had a motivation that moved them. Look, uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 1 says, um, this is the Apostle Paul, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel that they might be saved. Mm -mm. He had a motivation that moved him. He prayed for folks to get saved, so he had no problem telling them how to get saved. Let me ask you, when's the last time you prayed for folks to get saved? Mm -hmm. When's the last time you prayed for the nation, and when you prayed for your community, when you prayed for folks you know? Mm -hmm. It amazes me, Brother Clint, we have no problem praying for our needs. The greatest need is for folks to be saved. Really, how much do we really pray? When we pray for folks to be saved, we'll have no problem telling them. 
And Paul's motivation was clear. He had a burden to see people saved. Say, so how do you know that? Because he planted churches all over the known world. Huh? He'd even pray that God would let him go into places. He wanted to go into Macedonia before God let him. You know why God didn't let him, Brother Clint? Wasn't time. Because that Philippian jailer wasn't ready to get saved yet. But when God sent him over, he got saved in his whole house. And then uh, uh, it kept continuing on. And more people got saved. Mm -mm. He had a motiv motivation that moved him. Mm -mm. When you pray over it, you're willing to do something over it. And let me tell you this. When you weep over your prayers, you'll have more motivation to do something. Huh? Say, preacher, I'm not physically able to do something. If you're physically able to breathe, you're physically able to do something. You can pray. Right. Hmm? Uh, but can I say this? Uh, uh, he also had a mindset that would not allow him to quit. Listen to what Paul said in, in Romans chapter number 9. He said this, verse number 1. He said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in mine heart, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Go on, he's, he's talking about Israel. He, he is saying that if it were possible, he would that he would die and go to hell for his brethren, his kinsmen, for Israel to be saved. Now that's a burden. Hmm. I'm going to be real honest with you. I never want to go to hell for anybody. I'll be real honest with you. I wouldn't want to give one of my children to, to, to go to hell for anybody. But Paul's heart was so heavy that he would be willing to go to hell for people to get saved. I wonder tonight if you'd be willing to go across the street. Mm -mm. I wonder if you'd be willing to take a little heat from somebody that others might get saved. God help us. Uh, they had a motivation that moved them, a mindset that would not allow them to quit. Listen, if you're willing to die and go to hell for somebody, you're not going to quit telling people about the Lord. Mm. Right. amazes me how little it takes for people to quit talking about the Lord. A uh, little intimidation. Uh, somebody makes fun of you on the job. Somebody makes fun of you and your family. God help us. Just keep on telling them. Say, well, they don't listen. Keep on telling them. Well, they're not listening. Keep on telling them. Hmm? Sooner or later, they're either going to listen or they're going to quit coming around. But you ought to keep telling them because they need to be saved. Uh, they turn the world upside down. We're not turning anything except people's noses up. God help us. Amen. Can I say they had a might that was undeniable. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 44, the Bible says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, uh, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 2, 4, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, and a power. They had a might that was undeniable. They had the power of God in the presence of the Holy Ghost in their life. Can I say again, Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 8 said, After the Holy Ghost come upon you, you'll be witnesses unto me. Hmm. There's not a whole lot of spirit-filled people anymore because there's not a lot of witnesses anymore. Right. You know what moved people to Christ? They saw Christ in people telling them about Christ. Hmm? Amen. Hmm. I don't know about you. How many of you went to Boone County Fair this year? Anybody go? Raise your hands up. This is no trick question. Well, I'm not going to ask you if you ate a hot dog. You know, I did. But anyway, uh, you know what broke my heart? At the Boone County Fair, the Nation of Islam was there handing out materials. And there were more young people stopping by their tent than there were stopping by the Gideon tent who was giving out New Testaments. Matter of fact, the people that was working the Gideon tent 
was working harder than the Islamic people. They were going all the way out into the street trying to get people to get a New Testament. People weren't interested. But young people after young people, I watched them stop there by that tent of Islam. Hmm? Sad. Amen. Why were they going there? Hmm? Because they didn't see nothing out of the Christians worth stopping there for. I said next year I'm going to have a t-shirt made. I'm going to stand right across from their tent. I'm going to have it say, Jesus is the only way of salvation. And then I'm going to turn around and have it on Arabic in the back. Just keep turning around. Uh, the preacher, would you do that? Oh, I'd do that. If I'd wear this jacket, I'd do that. <laughs> Somebody said something about my jacket. I said, I'm loud and proud. Huh? But you see, they turned the world upside down because the Spirit of God was on them so much they could not be denied. Amen. They said, there's something about that crowd right there. Sure. Hmm? If you study Islam, their whole religion is a religion of hate. Yeah. Right. Hmm? Can I say, if you study the Bible, ours is one of love. Right. Amen. And love covers the multitude of sins. So how come our message isn't getting out? Maybe our love's not what it should be. God help us. Uh, can I say, how'd they turn the world upside down? They had a master who changed lives. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. I give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lift him up immediately. His feet and ankles and bones received strength. Did Peter raise that guy up? No, the Lord did, huh? Acts 4.10, Be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 12, uh, And when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse number 9, uh, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? God, uh, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, uh, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, uh, nor extortioners uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But I like verse 11. And such were some of you, uh, but ye are washed, uh, but ye are sanctified, uh, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Uh, they had a master that changed lives, huh? Amen. I'm glad the master changed my life. Amen. Amen. Listen, you say, preacher, how can we turn our world upside down? Huh? I realize I'm not stupid. I realize that when the apostle Paul went into these places, most of these people had never heard the gospel. It was all new and all exciting. Also realize the Apostle Paul had apostolic gifts. He was able to do things, uh, uh, miraculous things that people had never seen before because they did not have the completed Word of God. I understand all of that. But can I say, that should not cause us to excuse ourselves from doing what's right. We still have the truth. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Lord Himself. And they ought to see something different right. in us than they do all the false churches and all the cults in our communities. Yeah. So how are we going to turn our world upside down? How are we going to do it, preacher? Well, I've already told you in the message. First of all, by participating in the Great Commission. So, preacher, what can I do? How many of you, let's be honest, how many of you go out to eat? Caleb put up both hands, son. Thank you. They come by our house last night and ate 18 cookies. I counted them. Huh? Randy had to make him quit so kids could get some. 
Oh. He didn't eat 18, 16, whatever. We all go out to eat. What would be wrong taking some of them gospel tracks there and just putting your tip inside it? So I leave my tip on the car. We'll put the thing after you sign it inside. What would be wrong with that? What would be wrong when you go through the drive-thru and, and they hand your, your meal say, here, I just want to give you something you can read on your, on your break. I do that all the time. I just hand it to them, huh? I've never had them throw it back in my face. Whether they read it or not, I don't know. That's between them and God, but I'm just trying to do something, huh? Listen, uh, I'm going to get some new ones printed up. This is going to be real simple. On one side, uh, it'll have uh, 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 the address everything of our church. And you say, here, I'd just like to invite you to church. And if you look on the other side, that'll show you how to get to heaven. And on the back side, we'll just show them how to, just a little card stock. You can keep it in your pocket, keep it in your pocketbook. Just hand it to folks. Maybe when you're pumping gas or when you're uh, out somewhere or something. Uh, uh, Miss Janet, she used to, I don't know how she got away with it because, I mean, Miss Janet just gets away with stuff. But, I mean, used to, when she'd go all over the mall and she'd pray the whole time she'd walking around the mall and she'd walk up and get people preaching tapes. You know, you're not supposed to solicit in there, but she did it. Uh, she'd go around and say, hey, I, I, I've been praying and the Lord told me, give you this and this is my preacher he's preaching on here you need to listen to this uh, I don't know how many of them listen to it Miss Janet but you did your part hey you can do something you need to take part in the great commission huh? getting the gospel out hmm. not only that we can turn our world upside down but not only participate in the great commission but also I told you this by giving ourselves to prayer and I'm not talking about, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, Lord save people. I'm talking about taking an appointed time and just praying for folks to be saved. Just spend some time. You've got time. Just turn the radio off when you're in the car or, you know, turn the computer off or turn the TV off or turn the phone off and just take a few minutes and pray for folks to be saved. Give yourself to prayer. We can turn our world upside down by projecting Christ in our daily lives. People ought to see Christ in our steps. Now, I know you're saved just by the way you carry yourself, by your countenance. We ought to see Christ and hear Him in our speech. Huh? Our speech ought to not be with filthy communication. Our speech ought to not be, you know, vile. Our speech ought to be heavenly. And I just thought of a pet peeve. Can I give you a pet peeve? Marcy, let me talk to you. I hadn't talked to you all day. Between my red jacket and your yellow dress, we're going to gross people out right here. I've heard people say, oh, God. You know why my lips are so fat? Because my mama mashed my mouth one time because I said, Oh, God. She backhanded me right in the mouth. She drive the car. And she said, You don't ever mention his name unless you're talking to him or unless you're talking about him. Huh? Amen. I was about six. I'm a lot older than six. I hadn't got over that yet. But I hear people all the time, Oh, God. That is not Christian speech. That is degrading and almost blasphemous. Hmm. You see, we can project Christ with our speech. Hmm. By the way, our steps and our speech, if they're talking about our Lord in a defaming manner, if we're not going to take up for Him, we ought at least walk away. But it might do some of you some good to just take up for him. So wait a second, you're talking about my God, and he's not damned. Right. And neither am I, and I don't want to hear it. Right. Hmm? You'd be amazed when you put your foot down about the way other people talk, they'll quit talking like that around you. Hmm? Amen. Uh, listen, not only in our steps and in our speech, but we need to project Christ in our stand. By that I mean in our attitude. Hmm? Does not the Bible teach that we have a blessed hope? Hmm? And by the way, my hope's not in the Pope. My hope's in Jesus Christ. 
and he's coming. We have a blessed hope. Hope means that we got a good outlook. He's coming. Blessed means happy. Didn't mean crabby. It meant happy. Didn't mean negative hope. I got a blessed hope. Amen. There's some Christians that are the most negative people I've ever seen. Huh? They say everything's negative. Everything's down. Everything's going to break. Nothing's going to work. This is all going to go bad. Everything. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you hang around that long enough, guess what you're going to be? We're to have a blessed hope. People are to ask us of the hope that we have. They ought to see something in us. That causes them to say, why are you so happy? Because I'm saved. What are you talking about? Let me tell you. I was on my way to hell. I was lost. And I heard about Jesus. Uh, and he saved me when I called on him. Changed my life. And I'm happy, happy, happy because of it. Hmm? Right. Uh, what's wrong with being like that? What's wrong with being happy? You know what? That's contagious. Just like negativity is contagious, so is happiness. I'll prove it to you. Just go around and look at people and smile. You know what they do? They smile back. I got a terrible smile. I only smile on one side of my mouth, so I have to concentrate to smile, make both sides go up, you know, so I'm a little conscious about that. But I've looked at, you know, if I smile at people, they, they think I'm funny looking or something because they always smile back. You know what? It's okay to be happy. Right. I mean, we're only going to heaven. Right. Our sins are only paid for. Yeah. I mean, God's only blessing us. He's good to us. What's wrong with being happy? Amen. If what you have doesn't make you happy, you're probably not saved. Why don't you trade off and get something that make you happy? Sure. Huh? I'm, I'm glad I'm happy. I'm having the time of my life. Right. Now, here's the thing. Let me go talk to my friend, Brother Brian. I never get to talk to him because he's always up there looking down on people. Most people equate happiness with the circumstances of their lives or the things they have in their life. Circumstances and things do not make you happy. The only thing that will make you happy is joy, and joy comes from the Lord. Hmm? You remember when Paul was in getting ready to be prosecuted? And they asked him of the hope that was in him. He said, I just think myself happy. How was he able to think himself happy? He's in stocks and he's in jail and he maybe even be sentenced to death. Why would he in the world? He, I mean, he's not got anything that everybody says you got to have to be happy. What do you have? He had Jesus. He had joy. Uh, the joy of the Lord's your strength. Uh, you know, there's a great acronym for joy. Jesus first, others second, yourself last. When you live your life like that, guess what? You will be happy because you're not selfish. But a lot of people equate, well, if I had this, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't. Because if you got that, you'd find out there's a whole lot that comes with that that you weren't expecting, and it's a lot of upkeep, and you wouldn't be happy. Huh? You just wouldn't be happy. Some people are never happy because they got a joy problem. Mm -hmm. Things and circumstances will not make you happy. Jesus will. Amen. Mm -hmm. Learn to put him first. Yeah. Learn to seek his face. Learn to get in his word. Learn to spend time with him. Learn when your mind starts wandering off to utopia land that's going to make you happy. Bring your mind back into under subjection and put it on the Lord. You'll find out you're blessed. You'll find out you really have something to be joyful about. Mm -hmm. God has really been better you than you deserve. And you'd find out the real meaning of happiness. Mm -hmm. God, others, and then yourself. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You can be happy tonight. But see, your altitude will never be higher than your attitude. And if your attitude's not right... Your stand's not right, and people know it. I'm trying to quit, but I'm not going to because I'm having a good time. Huh? My mind's going back right now.
There was a fella years ago. Most of you weren't even here. Something was going on. Brother Chad, he used to, he'd come in, he was happy. He'd amen in the service. He was part of the service. He just got into it and everything. But then he went through a period where he just looked angry. I mean, all the time. And people started asking, is something wrong with good old brother so-and-so? He used to be so excited, so happy. and so It'd be like Brother Phil come in and Brother Phil just acting mad all the time. Yeah. And so I just went to him and said, hey, bro, something up. Everybody notice you, you're not the same. Well, here was his response. Well, if they got a problem with me, why didn't they come to me? I said, well, nobody's got a problem with you. We just noticed you're not as joyful as you used to be. Huh? Well, he got mad that he was mad. Huh? He had a joy problem. You know what his problem was? He got to listening to the wrong voices. He started listening to man instead of listening to the Lord, and he lost his joy. Can I say that's easy? It's easy to do. I want to tell you something. The Lord's been good to us. And when you put him first, you can't help but appreciate the goodness of God in your life. And when your attitude's right, people take notice of it. And when your attitude's not right, people take notice of it. So we're going to turn our world upside down. We've got to, have the, we've got to project Christ. We've got to have the right stand. Huh? Listen, if somebody's got to tie a pork chop around your neck to get the dogs to come play with you, you probably got a bad attitude. Okay? All right? Uh, you got to be infectious. People ought to want to hang around you. People ought to enjoy being around you. Huh? If you walk in a room and everybody just goes, <laughs> either you're not wearing deodorant or you got a bad, a bad attitude. You know something about it, huh? If you want to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. Hmm? Uh, and it don't take much to be friendly if you got Jesus first in your life. You can't project Jesus unless Jesus is first in your life. We've got to turn our world upside down because this world is out of course. And the psalmist wrote about when the earth goes out of course. We're there, friends. This earth is all out of course. People are all bent out of shape. And they, they're looking for answers and they're looking for some hope and they're looking for somebody to direct them in the right path. Who better than the Lord's church? Because we do have the answer. His name is Jesus. God help us turn our world upside down. Those around us and then those around them, those around them, wouldn't take much. We could turn our world upside down. We might even get more involved in missions, might get more involved here and there. No telling what God will do if we purpose in our heart to project Christ to give ourselves to prayer and to participate in the Great Commission listen if only one person's life has changed it would be worth it all God help us to project Christ let's all stand Brother Clint come get a song maybe you want to come thank the Lord for how good he's been to you maybe he's put something specific on your heart you need to pray about Nothing else, you ought to pray for somebody to get saved and for sinners to get saved. We had several here Sunday morning. You ought to pray they come back and get saved this Sunday. We just need to seek the Lord. Maybe you need to come tonight and say, Lord, what more can I do or what can I do to help turn our world upside down? Folks are coming. They're picking that song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for changing my life. Help me, Lord, to have the right attitude. Help me, Lord, participate in the Great Commission, be given to prayer. God, help us see sinners saved. Lord, I know that's your desire. It's your will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God, give us a greater burden for sinners. God, help us, Lord, to impact our world. Or we may never be like the Apostle Paul, but help us to be the best we can be. That God, somebody else will get in the family of God. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. And God, certainly for somebody here unsaved, I pray the night would be the night of their salvation. God, do business with your people. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.